We all didn't have any food. And what I remembered mostly was obviously of being hungry. I remember that continuously. And also we lived in a one room. So I remember being feeling secure as a child, but at the same time not having any privacy. So, and I remember the, the tightness and I remember my parents being in one area and Ili being on another and we were pretty much on top of each other. It wasn't difficult for me at all because I always hated Vienna because I experienced anti-Semitism before Hitler came. So I always wanted to leave. I remember I was five years old and said to my parents, why don't we go to America? Why are we staying here? I was radicalized at five. So it was no problem for me leaving Vienna. And going to Schenke was sort of, you know, when you're young, it was an adventure. It was an adventure for our parents. You know, they, they really had to uh, leave a lot behind, everything behind, their whole lifestyle behind. We left with just two suitcases. We couldn't take a anything with us. So it was, it was a real culture shock, languages and, and, and everything. For, for my parents, they had memories of a different life. And it was different. All the generation had difficulty to, to adjust it was a language barrier, they didn't speak English, forget Chinese, but so it, it, was, it was difficult. They used to come in at noon, every day at noon, and so. it went like this. First you heard the, the planes, and then came the sirens. So that is, uh, one day they tried to hit the Japanese radio station, and they hit the Chinese market right inside the ghetto, and that was horrendous. Yeah. That was one time I got a little afraid, so maybe, yeah. maybe we may not make it. And it's interesting. But it passed, actually. At that time, it's interesting, I was, what, eight, nine years old, yeah. and I, they gave me a bag with a red cross on it, and bandages were in there, and I'm supposed to run out and help. And I, didn't, and I thought, you know, I saw all these people on Richards, some of them had their legs hanging off, some had their limbs missing, and I really thought at the time, that I, my job was to go find the limbs and go bandage them back together. I mean, really, that's what I thought. And that was my job. I ran around looking for pieces to, you know, see who it belonged to. But I remember doing that, but do you, you know. Do you have a lot of those m moments or, or times when you feel like you had very different experiences oh, or yes. very different well, um, sure, reactions? Right, yeah. Well, oh, absolutely. That's, that's the story of the book. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, when, when we started the book, uh, we didn't think about it as writing with different memories. We thought we were writing one book. Yes. And I thought what Deborah had written about Vienna, where our parents told her they were going on a vacation. <laughs> so I said to her, what do you mean vacation? <laughs> and then it occurred to me, leave it like that. These are her memories and leave it like that. So it adds another dimension yeah. to the story. I think I learned in an early age to be afraid, and I was pretty much afraid of everything. And I've always felt that at some point in my life, I don't want to be a victim. The experience were always out there for me, but you, I, uh, you uh, uh, internalize them. So uh, they, they affect your behavior, even, even if you don't think they do, in a way. Okay. And had some positive aspects of it. Positive aspect was when I ran into difficulties, here, starting the business, and, my, and got fired a few times from jobs. And my, attitude, my attitude was, if I survive Chanka, this is nothing. You know, this is no, no problem. And, and, that, and that helped a lot. On the other side, still today, I'm, I'm still aware if I walk on the street at night, and somebody walks behind me, I'm aware of it. I will cross the street. <laughs> <laughs>